to share with you what I believe about the Holy Spirit birthing the desires of our hearts. From the very word go, we see God creating and he introduces himself as Elohim, God Elohim. There are many names of God and people remember the different names of God according to the place or the victory of God for the person in that place. So for me, the most powerful name that I've chosen to know God by is God Elohim. That means a God who wants to manifest himself in three persons, yet being one. It talks about the plurality of God, yet in one. So it's the same as a couple. When you say a classroom, immediately you understand that there's more than one person within that cluster. So when you say Elohim, you understand that there's just more than one person that is included in that cluster, even though it's one person. So for me, the Holy Spirit becomes one of the most significant persons of God in the era we live in, because he is the God who is with us. He is God Emmanuel. He is the one who is described in Genesis chapter 1 as hovering or brooding over the deep, dark, void, and cold world. And he births, first of all, light. He says, let there be light, and light becomes. Then we see that whenever there's darkness in our lives, whenever there's pain, whenever the days are cold, we can call on to the Holy Spirit to now once again brood over the circumstances of our lives. And then something will be birthed, that is light will be birthed out of it. At the same time, we see him speaking to a void world and talking about it being populated and filled. That reminds me every time I'm in a place of emptiness or lack, that there is a God in heaven who I can call to, especially God the Holy Spirit who resides with me, in me, around me. I can speak to the Holy Spirit, my fellow, my fellow counselor and comforter, and say, Holy Spirit, there's a void, there's a lack, there's a place in my heart that needs you. Won't you please fill that place, populate that place? And we see him, he says, multiply, be fruitful. Won't you multiply and be fruitful in my life now? What are the fruits of the Holy Spirit? What are the things that I'm expecting the Holy Spirit to bear through me in my life with me? Thirdly, we see him in a place of chaos, disorder, and he organizes everything. He puts and fashions things in this beautiful universe that we see. So we see things that are sitting. We, we take time to go and watch things. We create telescopes. We create microscopes because we want to see this order of God, the law and the governance of God, putting things together in from what was first of all empty, first, second of all dark, and now which was chaotic. And we see God ordering things around. So when we, when we are finding ourselves in a place of disorder or chaos, we still have a God who is able to organize our lives and fashion them to a point where people will find it interesting to come and even zoom into our lives with curiosity, even zoom into our lives for whatever the reason, but they see the order, the governance of God in our lives. I want to read a, a, a short scripture before I close. The story that we all know where the boys in Babylon were told to worship a statue. It's in Daniel chapter 3. And then the, the herald loudly proclaimed, nations and people of every language, this is what you are commanded to do. As soon as you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp and pipe, and all kinds of music, you must fall down and worship the image of gold that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. This becomes very significant in the space that I'm finding myself in right now, where we are busy trying to create music according to God, because we want to say to the nations of the world, yes, we know that there's a king of Babylon who is calling you to worship his image, but now we are saying as the image of God, we want you to worship the origin, the source of the image, because that's what worship is. Worship is responding to the God of heaven, to say here we are, we, we recognize that you are a magnificent God, if people could bow down to a statue that was magnificent, how about bowing down and worshiping the great I am, the true God over the universe? So we also come and say, yes, nations and people of every language, this is what you are commanded to do. As soon as we hear the sound of the horn created by God, the sound of the flute, using the, 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 the things that God has created, the harp, the pipe, and all kinds of music, all kinds of gospel, sorry, of gospel music, you must come down and bow down to your father. 
Yes, you can bow. Some people are bowing down. They can dance and, and carry on to another God. But you are saying this is a God that is supposed to spend yourself worshipping, bowing down. Because music is a language that is used for worship, even by the enemy, but also especially by God. So we are birthing these new songs again in response to a God who sings to us, who rejoices over us with singing. We are birthing them because the Holy Spirit inspires, he breathes into our hearts. He breathes songs, he breathes rhythms and melodies. And we are saying now with, with hymns, because the Bible is full of all sorts of lyrics. We just need to put them together into melodies and sing them back to the owner and the creator of the music, who is God. So when we, when we stand here, when we're sitting here, whatever we're doing, we are basically singing back to God what he has already sung to us. We are responding to the, to the cause. God is a cause. And we are responding to his promptings to say, nations of all the earth, from wherever you are, whatever you do, there is a sound of heaven that God wants to play on earth and is inviting us, all of us, from all sorts of corners from wherever we are to say you can bow down now not to an image of gold but to the great i am whose image you are so may you be blessed by the music that you are producing it is not meant by any ways to take you away from the path it is actually meant to make you draw closer to the elohim of heaven the god who brings light the god who restores order and the god who fills every void may you always find him to be worthy to be worshipped amen and with great joy.